Hello, oh, this week I'm back with another Hobbit video. I did some like Hobbit themed clothes and I don't know maybe six to eight months ago. I don't remember. But if you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. It's very thrilling because I set my hair on fire. We're gonna hopefully not do that again this time, but hopefully it is equally as thrilling as last time. I'm basing this off of Momo O'Brien's Hobbit costume that she wore in her goat LARP video. I don't know if there's that much overlap between like the LARP YouTube community and the sewing like costuming community, but if you haven't seen Momo O'Brien's videos, you should totally watch them. She's very cute. I think her outfits are really cute and I really like her whole bringing femininity into LARP because nerd stuff has always been kind of dominated by men in like the this is how we do nerd things positions and it's always kind of been a really male aesthetic. Definitely been less of the case recently but I really love that she's super true to herself and adds pastels to everything. I think it's very cute. So I wanted to make a pastel habit look. This will be kind of like springy and cute now that it is past spring. This is totally thematically appropriate, right? <laughs> I also am going to be going to my first LARP in a few weeks. She's one of the big reasons that I've wanted to get involved in LARP. I had friends who did LARP in like college and stuff, but they were all dudes and they made it sound very dude oriented. But her videos make them look so much fun. She's not just like specifically a LARP channel. She's kind of a immersive experiences channel, but she is kind of what introduced me to LARP as a place that is welcome to girls. That's the basic plan. I have a pattern in mind and I'm going for kind of an inspired look rather than a direct copy. Hopefully it doesn't end up looking like a direct copy. Uh, at the very least I've got different colors. So uh, let's go look at the pattern. I'm going to be using Simplicity 1773. I believe this is the pattern that Momo used herself. I don't know for sure but just from looking at her costume it pretty much looks exactly like this bodice style so I think that either she made it up herself or this is the pattern she used. I'm personally going to make a completely separate skirt so I'm only going to use the bodice pattern and that's that's it. I'm just going to make like a normal dirndl style gathered skirt for the skirt because that'll be simple and then I have two pieces instead of one. For fabrics I got both of these two from Mood and this one is left over from my linen dress project. It's like the cottage core linen dress project that I did a little while ago and the color is kind of the biggest way that I'm deviating from Momo's design. I wanted to do pastel as well so it's like a cute little springtime hobbit. I chose this faux corduroy because I wanted a little bit more texture and I really liked how these two textures worked together so I think that'll really be nice and then the linen is just going to be the piping. So that'll be kind of like the darker accent piece for this green and it'll also be the piping on the wool for the bodice as well. a lap zipper. I, I don't know, I guess my instructions were not very thorough. So people have asked me to go over the instructions for a lap zipper, so I'm gonna be doing that this time. My zipper doesn't exactly match, but it's close enough. I didn't have anything in, quite in this like pinky purple brown shade, so we're just gonna go with lavender. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch one side of the skirt together, and this will be the side the zipper goes in. It's a lot easier to put zippers in when they're flat, so we're gonna just do that first. Okay, now I've got this 
seam stitched and pressed open. The book that I'm using for my instructions is the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to lay the zipper on top face down. Um, I'm letting this tape sit at the very top because this will become seam allowance for when I put the waistband on. So I'm just going to lay this on top and then I'm just going to stitch it to one side of the seam allowance and that's it for now. So now I have this basted just to this one seam allowance, like this is still free on this side. I'm going to flip this over like this. So now everything, if I were to like push this to the side, everything is to the right of this zipper. So next I'm going to stitch it along this line and I'm going to make sure that all I'm catching is this left seam allowance here and the zipper. So I don't want to catch anything like of the other side of the skirt or this seam allowance or anything. I'm going to make sure that I'm stitching to the left of this seam line here and I'm just going to grab right along this edge here. Okay, hopefully you can see that, but that's all stitched down. I didn't catch any of the actual skirt. This is the seam that sews the two parts of the skirt together. And then this is where I stitched the zipper to the seam allowance. So that's all stitched in there. So next you just like flatten this out so that it's very smooth. Then baste along where the zipper is. So you can't see it because the zipper is underneath. But what I wanna do is now catch the other side of the zipper tape along this side of the fabric. I'm just gonna baste that into place so that I'm not fighting it when it's on the machine. So I was gonna use this hem lace as like actual hem lace and like do the thing where I press this up and then I do a cross stitch catching just like the top edge of the lace and like stitching this down. But I think it's kind of cute how it is as the hem and I don't think this fabric is gonna fray out at all. I don't know, I, I think that it's cute and it'll save me a couple hours of work if I don't cross stitch it all up. So I think I'm gonna leave it. Uh, let me know if you think that was a bad choice or if you like that choice. It's not like technically correct, but I think it looks cute. So I don't know, that's what we're doing. All that's left now is to pleat this, put a waistband on and do some closures. So that should be pretty quick now. The skirt's done, I'm gonna start on the bodice. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn all of this bias into piping. So for the final part of this costume, I can't have a Momo inspired costume without making a flower crown. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Hopefully it'll go quickly. I have this really chunky wire. Oh, I'm not gonna use the really extra chunky. I'm gonna use this like chunky light wire. And I decided to use this because the millinery wire I think would be really thin. So it wouldn't have much for these like flower stems to grab onto. I'm not gonna keep the stems on all of them. I'm probably gonna feed wire. I have this floral wire too, and I'm gonna use that to like kind of lash the flowers to it. And then I'm gonna wrap everything in floral tape. So hopefully it'll look like the stem of flowers like when it's wrapped, if that makes sense. So that's why I wanted it to be kind of thick. I am gonna stick a ribbon on the end of it as well, just so I can tie it on rather than having to like get my head measurement really exact because we're going for speed here. So that's the plan. Um, let's just get started. So I'm just gonna measure this and then I wanna give it a little bit of extra, maybe like 
a half inch on either side so I can bend these back to make a little loop. There's 20, so we want it 21 if it's gonna be a half inch extra. Oh god, this is hefty. Ow. All right, so we've got our wire piece. This is for the head piece. And let me just make sure that fits on my head. Okay, so then I'm gonna bend, and please don't break my pliers. This end back here. I definitely wanna use these because they match the dress the most, but I don't have very many of them. Okay, so I think this went really well and I'm happy with the reveal. I don't know, I, I like obviously I'm just filming this so I haven't edited it yet, but I had fun doing the reveal and I got to eat some fun food. So uh, I think that was good and I'm hoping that it's like getting me out of my like funk with <laughs> filming and everything. So I'm trying to do more vlog style reveals and hopefully it's working mm, I don't know um, but for this project I think it worked out really well I think it's really cute I was a little worried that it was more like fairy tale than uh, hobbity and like maybe it is it, it is kind of but I, I think it's still cute anyways and I think it like uh, kind of resembles Momo's like uh, it has obviously different colors and a slightly different like fit and lengths and everything so I think it still counts as inspired by rather than like fully copied hopefully <laughs> if it's not if it's too close then i'm sorry i i apologize for copying things <laughs> um but i i'm really happy i was like i was concerned about a couple things with this um the bodice for one is like much more corsety than hers is hers is like fairly loose and she cinches it with a belt whereas mine i like i always like making things kind of more like stays um so that they're a little bit more compressed and like have the structure and stuff in them. I don't know. I just really like structured clothing. I don't know. I also did a longer skirt. I didn't actually mean to do a longer skirt. So I put hem lace on the bottom with the full intention of pressing it all up and doing a cross stitch. But then I decided I didn't want to do that. It was too much effort. This stuff doesn't fray like at all. So it's like very stable. So once I put the lace on there, I figured that was good enough. Uh, <laughs> It's not like a proper hem, but it looks nice and it's not gonna fray out, so I'm not concerned about it. I think it's really cute that there's like a little tiny lace detail on the edge. So, worked out in the end and it's pretty long. Uh, hers and a lot of the other Hobbit skirts that I've seen are more like mid calf length or knee length, um, but uh, I don't know. Like that's cute, but I tend to like a little bit longer skirts. 
Uh, I either go like full above the knee or like really long and not really much in between. I don't know. I was also concerned about how much bulk I was stuffing into this waistband because it's a, kind of a bulky wool, but that turned out fine. Like it pressed, oh, there's like a little plant in my skirt. Uh, it <laughs> it compressed down pretty well uh, once it got pressed and like folded into the waistband. So that turned out to be not a problem either. Uh, the only thing that's kind of annoying with this is the sleeves. They fall down a lot and I think it's not because this is wrong, but because I made the armbands a little bit tight, so they want to keep like kind of falling down. I don't know if maybe I should put elastic in them or something, but uh, because they fall down, they kind of drag the top of the sleeves down. I don't know, it like it fits fine, but I think maybe having it on a shift is making it fall down because it makes it a little bit more slippery against my skin so it doesn't have anything to grip to. I don't know. I honestly don't know why it keeps falling down because like it's measured pretty carefully like it's not too big it's or it's not too long and it's not too short but it just it wants to fall down anyways maybe they're too far out they they're pretty far to the side so it might be because of that oh i heard baby bet hold on look at this sweetie can you say hi yeah, mom put me down okay here you go there you go and yeah oh so the piping took ages uh, so when I first set out to do this, I was like, oh, the piping won't take that long. It's, it'll be fine. Uh, I forgot that all of these needed piping, so that took the most amount of time. Making these sleeves took a while because of all the piping. So I had to make all of the individual strips with their piping first, and then I had to stick it all in the sleeve. Um, and then the sleeves are actually a separate piece. So like, they just snap on. So it's versatile. <laughs> uh, that was actually in the instructions, so that was a nice thing for the instructions. This pattern was also pretty good. I don't think I made many alterations. I might have made a few alterations, but the pattern generally is pretty good and the instructions are pretty good, so everything worked out great. Uh, I'm just trying to snap this back in there. There we go. So these just snap in, so I can take them out if I want to have like a different look that doesn't have these like pained sleeves but I, I think they're cute, so I'm gonna keep it. Uh, flower crown, very massive flower crown. I didn't have enough smaller flowers, so the flower crown is just like very big on the sides, but that's okay. Like with the Hobbit wig, I think it works fine, so I think it's okay. I don't know if I suit the Hobbit look as well. I think I'm more of an elf girl. <laughs> like I think that I personally look better with straight hair and like, or kind of wavy hair. I think this super curly look is not really my thing like i th i think i look cute i think this is a much better attempt than my like previous hobbit looks but uh i i still think that the elf life is more suited to my preferences so maybe i'll make an elf look soon okay bye bye i think that's pretty much it so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions comments uh, concerns, I guess. Uh, if you liked how this turned out or if you want me to try a different style of Hobbit look, uh, let me know. If you think this is not very Hobbity, also let me know. Uh, I'm curious what if you guys think that this counts as like a Hobbity look or if this is more like Snow White fairy tale kind of look. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, so let me know your opinions on that and then if you'd like to see my other videos in the future, I have one more Hobbit look coming and it's more of a like earth tone green Hobbit. So stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.